All right, so let's get started. So we will take our block and come to the mat and we'll do the block under the sacrum. So coming down onto the floor here. Taking a few moments, letting things soften. Inhale and exhale. And then getting that block, putting it under the legs, lifting up. Back of the pelvis on that block. Maybe taking a few moments here, just feeling the weight of the pelvis into the block. And then extending the legs out. And reaching through the heels. Maybe a little pushing on the block near your waist, getting some more space in the lower back. And then getting that physical body settled in. So you can keep pressing on the block there by your waist if you like, but then bringing more attention to that breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Just noticing how it feels to try to breathe deeply, to try to breathe all around through the body, the front ribs, the side ribs, the back, in this little bit of an arch here. And then maybe noticing the subtle or not so subtle effects that breath is having on your body, the little adjustments, the little extend and release, the little extend and center feelings, balancing out of the right and the left sides. And if you want cooperating with the block, yet yeah, a little bit more cooperating with the block, flexing the feet, reaching a little bit more through the heels, drawing those abdominal muscles up, drawing the hip bones up. And we'll take a stretch overhead with the arms long and flat. And then we're going to bend the right leg in. Big inhale and exhale, hinging that right leg up, maybe getting hold of the knee or behind the leg, reaching a little longer through that left leg. And then reach even longer through the left leg, Floating that left leg up off the floor about a foot so it's parallel to the floor. Taking a few breaths here, really reaching from the right knee to the left foot. And reaching that left leg back down to the floor. And then release the right leg, sliding that right leg out to straight. Coming to the center, arms alongside, taking a deep breath. And then stretching those arms up overhead again. And bending the left leg in, maybe taking the hands to the left leg. You can have both or one. And reaching longer through that right leg.
And then reaching them longer through the right leg, floating it up off the floor, about a foot parallel to the floor. Reaching from that left knee out the right foot. And reaching that right leg back down to the floor. And releasing the left leg, sliding it out. Maybe that push on the block near the sacrum again. And we'll take another breath or two here on the block. And then bending the knees, lifting up off that block, rolling down vertebrae by vertebrae, landing on the floor, letting everything melt into the floor. And then a nice gentle drop of the knees over to the left, taking two or three breaths here. And rolling through the center, dropping those knees over to the right, breathing here. And coming back to the center, and we will come up to sitting. And sitting in Sukhasana, the cross legs, using those arms alongside, lengthening up, getting space between the vertebrae, space in the hip sockets. And a little shifting and squinging, if you like. And then slowly release with the arms, letting the hands rest on the knees, pouring down the sides of the neck off the tops of the shoulders, long through the top of the head. Inhaling and exhaling, softening, maybe closing your eyes, bringing your attention to that breath. Arriving here in your body, arriving here with your breath, and letting that breath draw your mind into the body, into just being here now. And then let's reach out wide through the collarbones, through the fingertips. Inhale and exhale, breathe those arms up, taking up lots of space. And breathing them down, let's do that twice more. And then we will come forward, pouring out and over. So as a general principle in yoga, we talk about, well, I don't know, actually it is different sometimes. Some people say, start with the breath. But before you can start with the breath, you have to already be there in the body. So um, usually you get that physical body, place centered, working, and then you attach the breath to that. 
And then that breath acts sort of like a tether or a draw to steady and draw the mind in. But sometimes it feels more to me as I was thinking about this, that actually my mind will arrive here and my body is still creaking along behind somewhere, taking a little longer to get here. All right, so let's walk our hands over to the right diagonal. And then left hand on the right knee, twisting open, turning inside out. Or if you want to put the left forearm on the floor, if that feels better doing that. So anyway, so what I was just saying, what that was about is, there is the way I talk, the way we talk or conceive of things yogically, but then there's also your experience, which doesn't always match up with the conventional system. And then reaching that right arm over the ear, a little side bending action. Draw the abdominal muscles a little up into the spine, adding a little more roundness. And big swoop around with the right arm coming to the center. Coming up, unfurling that spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, landing up on top of those city bones, letting everything arrive here. Let's change the cross to the leg, cross of the legs. And coming forward again. And then let's walk the hands over to the left. So even when your experience is different than the system or the conventions or the, uh, you know, the standard process, those conventions, the standard process, the conditions, they're still valuable because they make a framework, they make a reference point. And then let's put the right hand on the left knee and twisting open. Pouring out the front of the left shoulder, or maybe right forearm on the floor if that works better. And then reaching that left arm over the ear in a little side bend action. All oh, those abdominal muscles up, making things feel a little more rounded, especially along the left side. And then a big swoop around with that left arm coming back to the center and forward. Couple breaths, evening out the two sides. And then coming up, unfurling that spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, the body arrives back up in the vertical position. And inhale and exhale, here's the breath, and then the mind settles here, just being here now.
All right, let's come on to all fours. And uh, finding that long spine up against the ceiling. Placing those hands just as carefully as if we were in the plank of the downward facing dog. Feeling a little lift from the base of the wrist joint, drawing up that inner arm so you're not sinking down into the hands, even though they have a gentle press into the floor. And then let us reach back with the right leg with the toes tucked under, pressing back into that right heel, lengthening down the back of the right. And then maybe lifting that left thigh, making the right leg stretch a little longer. And setting that left leg down and let's lift our right leg up and then lengthen it out. Lift the head a little, lift the collarbones up and forward a little bit more swoop going up. Like you're doing salavasana, salavasana, the locust pose up there. And then we'll bend the right knee. So keep lifting that right thigh up. So maybe just holding here, or you could take the left hand to the right ankle. And then we will let go of that ankle, swing the right knee forward, knee to the nose, rounding up a moment. And then setting that right knee down. Deep breath, extending the left leg back, pressing back into the heel, lengthening down the back of the left. And then maybe lifting that right thigh up, making the left leg stretch a little longer. And setting that right knee down, lifting the left leg up, and then lifting the upper chest and the head a little forward and up, swooping up, little salabhasana locust pose on the back of the body. And then bending that left knee, lift that knee a little higher. So you can hold here, or maybe the right hand is going to find the left ankle. Everything going up. And then we will swing that left knee to the nose, rounding. Setting that left leg down and take the knees a little bit wider. Take a long pull back into child's pose for a couple breaths. And then Let's come up into downward facing dog. Auto Mukha Svanasana. Maybe a little walking the dog or anything else you want to do. And then here we are, the best downward facing dog of this moment. Balancing out the body, finding your best alignment. Inhaling up to the sitting bones, exhale, pouring down your legs. And then not thinking of anything, just feeling this pose, this shape, your breath.
Then let's take a length and forward to the plank, long and flat against the ceiling. Stretching back through those legs. And we're going to lower to the floor, any means you want. You can just bring the knees down and come forward to a cobra, or else you can um, do chaturanga. I'm going to do kneeling chaturanga, and you could do asta namaskar, the knees, chest, chin. And then we'll all be on the floor on our belly in the cobra, the small cobra, squeezing those arms in, hands back by the nipple line or the um, ribs. And then coming down, pulling the elbows back a little more length from the top of the head forward. And then let's lengthen ourselves up and lengthen down. And the next time we'll lift the right leg as we lengthen. Lifting that right leg, hold there a moment and lengthening down. And then the left. Lengthen up, hold the breath and down. Once more, right and left. And then with the left. And let's peel ourselves up off that floor and back up to downward facing dog. If you want to go through a vinyasa here, smoothly go ahead, any version. And then one more breath and downward facing dog. Then looking between the hands to jump or step forward. Into the concave back halfway up. And folding over. Let's step back with the left leg into the long low lunge. And then we'll bring the left knee down to come up in the Jayasana, the kneeling lunge. Inhaling up the front, exhale, pouring down the back. And let's interlock the fingers behind, bringing those arms down. Interlock the fingers, rolling the shoulders out, sliding the hands down the back of the left leg. And bringing those arms back up overhead. Namaste in front. And then stepping forward into the concave back. And folding over, and we will step back with the right leg. Long line, and then bringing that right knee down, coming up in the Jayasana on the left. And we're reaching those arms around to interlock the fingers, rolling the shoulders out, sliding those hands down the back of the right knee. How's that breath doing? And releasing the arms up overhead. Namaste in front and stepping forward. Concave back halfway up, holding over. And coming up to standing, big front body yawn. Ah, 
pressing the arms down long through the top of the head. Breathing here. And then we'll Utkatasana, the chair pose. So let's take the direct route. Just reach forward with the arms, reach back with the sitting bones. And two long diagonal lines up and long diagonal lines back, pulling back into the hinge of the hip joint. And let's twist to the right wide arm. And reaching that right arm around, hands to namaste. And namaste to the center. And then just tip forward into the forward bend. Concave back halfway up, folding over. Stepping back with the left leg and into the elephant rider. Feet on the diagonal, pressing those knees out and back, maybe a little squinging in the hip joints. And maybe sliding. So it usually works better to do the sliding if your feet are a little bit wider apart. And you can slide back to the left, lengthening through that right leg, sliding across to the right. And finishing up, we're back in the center. We're just going to turn back to our right lunge and step forward into the concave back halfway up, folding over. Coming up to standing, big front body yawn. Work those back muscles a little and pressing the arms down long through the top of the head. Deep breath and we'll do that twisting left and let's hinge into our Utkatasana, the chair pose. Twisting to the left, wide arms. And a big reach around with that left arm, hands to Namaste. And then to the center, pouring into the forward bend. Concave back halfway up, folding over a little more, stepping back with the right leg into the elephant line. Here we are again. Inhale and exhale, arriving. All right, and then let's come around to the temple pose on this side. So coming up three-pointed star, rotating those side bones into the hip joints, reaching up through the fingertips, and then pulling the knees wide, pulling the elbows wide, hands to namaste. Everything pulling wide and drawing into the center. And then let's go around the other way, bringing the hands up the center line. Three-pointed star. And then a big reach side as we bend the knees, coming back around to namaste. Right. 
And let's do that around once more. Coming up three pointed star and into the temple pose. And then coming back around three pointed star. And a big reach wide with the arms and into the temple pose. And then coming over, turning back to our left lunge, stepping forward into the concave back, halfway up, folding over, taking a breath or two. You can always pause and take a breath anytime you need to let all those disparate parts of ourselves arrive wherever we are. And then coming up to standing, big front body yawn, pressing the arms down long through the top of the head. Let's interlock the fingers behind, rolling the shoulders out. And lengthen the chest to lift the chin, coming over. And release the hands. Continuing as usual, concave back, folding over, vinyasa or not, downward facing dog. And then we're going to do the right, left, right pass off of the legs and down the face of dog. So we lift our right leg up. And through to the lunge. Let's come up in the warrior one, or it could be the high lunge, either one. Arriving here, a little bridge pose in the pelvis, lifting up and over. Let's take a circle with the arms. Don't let that lunge move. Keep that lunge long and wide and deep as the arms come around. And then a long reach forward down to the floor, stepping back to downward facing dog, passing off to your left leg, which lifts up. And through to the lunge, coming up in the warrior number one, or the high lunge. Here we are. And then circling the arms, sort of like that coming forward and up continues around as the arms circle. And then we go the other direction, coming back, reaching forward and over, stepping back, lifting the right leg up. And through to the lunge, coming up in the warrior one or the high lunge. And this time we're going to keep our left arm there and take just the right arm back to the left leg. A little bit of a subtle twist to the right. We find a line from the left fingertips down to that right sitting bone. And then we're going to windmill down to the wide leg forward bend, Prasarita Padottanasana, pivoting the feet to the parallel side with straight legs. And then let's do the eagle pose down here. So I'm not being the mirror here. We're going to bring the right arm under the left into the eagle pose arms, or maybe just holding your shoulders. And then coming up, feeling that right arm pressing up under the left arm to help pull you up. And you can lift up the front of the body any amount. Finding that breath.
And then we're going to come back over, reaching out through the fingertips, pulling yourself over. And then as we come over, pull the elbows up into the belly a little round up. Letting that go, release the arms, hands into the floor. Give a press down with the hands so you can really extend the legs. And then you can let the torso pour over a little bit. And we will turn back to the right lunge. And stepping back to the plank. And then through the vinyasa or not. Or you can go through the vinyasa two or three times if you like. We don't have a lot of through the vinyasa today. And we'll all be in downward facing dog or perhaps in child's pose. Breathing wherever you are, and then we'll do that whole thing left, right, left. All right, here we are in downward facing dog. And we will lift our left leg up. And through to the lunge, warrior number one or the high. Circling the arms. And a long reach forward and over, stepping back to downward facing dog, passing off to the right leg that lifts up. And through to the lunge. Coming up in the warrior one or the high lunge. Arms continue around. And reaching forward, stepping back, passing off to the left leg, which lifts up. And through to the lunge, coming up in the warrior number one on the left. And then this time we're going to keep the right arm where it is. Take that left arm back to the back of the right leg. Lifting up and over a little subtle twist to the left here. Trying to connect the right fingertips down the arm into that left sitting line. And then a big windmill down, turning to the wide leg forward bend, Krasarita Padotanasana, the wide apart feet to pose. Ah, letting everything arrive here. And then eagle pose arms, this time with the left arm under, also known as the other arm, or maybe holding the shoulders. And then we'll come up, pressing up from underneath with that left arm to help pull you up. And lift up the front of the body and the amount. Don't force that though. We still want to have nice deep round breaths. And then we'll come back over, reaching out through those fingertips. We reach out, and then as we come over, pulling the elbows back up into the belly, a nice round in the back, letting that go. Take a little weight into the hands so you can get those legs extended nice and strong, or and over.
right, and let's come up onto our hands and we're going to take a twist. Um, let's see, at the risk of confusing everybody, I'm going to switch to being the mirror. I'll probably confuse myself as who I'll confuse, but one side and then the other side, that's what's important. Let's twist to the right, which should be our back leg. Left hand down the floor, reaching up with the right. So finding lots of space first, long through the top of the head, long through the arms. And then see if you can pull that left shoulder down more while the right shoulder reaches up more. And then maybe a little bend in that left leg. Left side going down. And it also has a little pull to the left as you try to twist toward the right. Finding a good spot for yourself, for your body. Inhale and exhale. And then bringing everything back to the center. Taking a breath. And then we will twist to the left, also known as the other side, probably the front of your mat. Twisting left, so making lots of space. Think of going more up and out as we start. And then maybe bending that right elbow, pulling the right shoulder down, reaching up even more through the left. You can take a little bend in that right knee. So I'm sort of pulling to the right at the same time as I'm trying to twist to the left. And then back to the center. Ah, taking a few breaths here, evening everything out. And then let's turn back to our left lunge, the front of the mat. I'm not being the mirror anymore. And we will step back to that plank and through the vinyasa or not or many times. And then we'll all meet up and down with facing dog. And as much as child's pose might be calling you, can you hold this downward facing dog for three or four more breaths? Sometimes if we're feeling a little weary, that would be me right now. It doesn't like really feel that good to be holding here. It doesn't feel like that downward facing dog where I Feel all those wonderful little nuances and the stretch and the reach and all that. It's kind of dull, but maybe just be there with that dullness. That's all right. And breathe. And then we will make our way to child's pose. And let's take a slide forward onto our stomach into the sphinx. Pulling back with the elbows, lengthening the front of the body along the floor.
and then coming down and let's bend those legs and we'll go to the bow pose so there's the option of the interlocked fingers bow pose there's also the sphinx bow pose and then there's the getting hold of the ankles and lifting up Thinking of everything going up, even if it doesn't go up very much. Are we still breathing? And then coming down. Ah. Oh. And let's peel ourselves up and on to our knees. And we'll sit for a moment on the heels and simplified Virasana, or maybe on the block if you like, or something different if this doesn't work for your knees. Long spine going up, long through the top of the head. And let's breathe those arms up, two long parallel sides, long parallel center line. And we'll twist to the right, arms wide and parallel to the floor. Inhale and exhale, reaching back, reaching forward. Long through the top of the head. Big lift up the center. <clears throat> and we'll twist left, same thing, arms parallel to the floor, reaching forward, reaching back, long center. Coming back up, and we'll bring the arms down, coming up onto our knees. Knees hip distance apart. And we're going to do essentially that same thing in Ustrasana, the camel pose. So we're going to be taking your hands onto the waist or going down the sacrum here, or not onto the waist, but just below if you're doing that version. And just take a small Ustrasana, sort of feeling what's going on, letting your body know where you're going. And then we'll come up, and just like we were doing sitting on the heels, breathing those arms up overhead, long parallel sides, long strong center line, twisting to the right, arms parallel to the floor. And then we're going to lift our left arm up, right arm comes down, maybe onto the sacrum there. Maybe it can get to the right heel, maybe the left heel, but don't force that. So we've got a back bend with a little twist, so being extra cautious there. And as you come up, lots of strength, lifting up. So come down, take a little break, do a little cat cow if you need to, and we'll do that on the left as you're ready. Even though I'm talking and moving now, you don't have to be ready to do the left yet. As we inhale and exhale, twisting left arms parallel to the long through the top of the head. Bringing the right arm up, the left arm starts down, either onto the left hip. Maybe it moves down to the left heel. Maybe it comes across to the right. Wherever we are, keep going up. And then using lots of strength to bring yourself back up. And one more Ustrasana evening out the sides. So this might be a smaller Ustrasana. So a counter pose can sometimes be the same pose or action we were just doing, but in a simpler 
less strenuous version. Or maybe you want to go for the heels. And then we will finish with all of this, coming up with strength, contracting your way down. So maybe cat and pile on all fours, if you like, or the more intense ones sitting on the heels. And then as you're ready, coming to child's pose. Inhale and exhale, everything arriving here. And coming up and extracting those legs. And let's body cone us in the feet together, knees out to the side. And coming forward, lengthening up and over, using those elbows to press down on the legs, or maybe walking the hands forward. Breathing into the back of the body, it may take a little while for you to ease yourself over. We're going the opposite direction of all that back bending we've been doing. And on up, bringing those legs in. Let us make our way down to the floor. Oh, here we are with our spine melting into the floor again, just like we were at the beginning. Though, of course, it's not just like we were at the beginning. And then you can do something different, but let's do the happy baby, bringing those legs in and up, holding on maybe behind the thighs, maybe the ankles, maybe the outer foot, pulling those knees down. So it's the more you pull the knees down, the more that tailbone rolls up, which is a nice stretch for the lower back. And then the more you keep that pelvis pressed down on the floor, the more the stretch goes into the hip joints, deep into the hip joints. So either one, both, don't even have to think about it. Sometimes we might want to choose one way over the other way for a particular reason, but not now. You can also go side to side. If you want to have a little leg extension, you can stretch out one leg at a time or maybe both. And 
And then we will finish up and make our way to Shavasana. Sliding the legs out, long through the top of the head, winding things up as best you can. Arms face the ceiling back, so the hands on the floor, or maybe you've chosen a different arm position. It's something symmetrical, something where the weight of the arm is supported. And feeling the back of the head centering the neck as you soften and close the eyes. And then inhale and exhale, sinking. Body has arrived here on the floor, getting heavier and heavier. Long, slow inhale and exhale, focusing your mind, drawing that in. And in Shavasana, we're trying to go a little beyond that, or a lot beyond that, where we're not even that body or the breath or the mind, but just pure being, which is a very difficult place to arrive. As soon as you realize you've arrived there, you're not there anymore. So we just head that way. We just keep doing that process over and over. Heavy body. Deep breath, quiet mind. And breathing back into your body, moving the fingers and toes, maybe circling the wrists and ankles. Stretching the arms up overhead. 
and then bending the knees, gently making your way up to sitting and sitting in any comfortable position with that long and slow. Taking a few more moments, sitting quietly inside yourself. Namaste. Thank you for coming. Class is much better than video. Oh, I'm, they're still recording. I can't see. There it is. Like,